In this video, we're going to look at the geometric distribution. We are going to compute the geometric probabilities using the geometric probability formula, a binomial distribution table, and or a graphing calculator. You know I'm all about the Excel spreadsheet, so we're going to be using Excel. We're going to use a geometric probability distribution to solve real-world applications. We're going to compute the mean and standard deviation for a geometric distribution. There are three main characteristics for a geometric distribution or a geometric experiment. Um, there is one or more Bernoulli trials, which are basically a simple random experiment with two possible outcomes, success or failure, with all the failures except being the last one, which is when you finally get success. And so in other words, you're keeping track of what you're doing until you get your first success and then you stop. For an example, you throw a dart at a bullseye until you hit the bullseye. The first time you hit the bullseye, this is success, so you can stop throwing the darts. It may take five or six times for you to hit the bullseye, but you keep going until you hit it. You can think of trials as failure, 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 until you hit success, and then you stop. Now, in theory, the number of trials could go on forever. There must be at least one trial also. The probability P of success and the probability Q of failure is the same for each trial, so we know that the probability plus Failure should equal 1, so in other words, uh, failure is equal to 1 minus the probability of success. Here, our big random, vari our random variable, capital X, is the number of independent trials until the first success. So suppose you are shuffling a deck of cards, and you turn over the top card, you put the card back in the deck, and then you reshuffle. You repeat this process until you get a jack. Is this a geometric distribution? And the answer is yes, because a couple of things is you're going to keep doing this until you get a jack. So you know that you get failure, failure, success, or success could happen on the first time. Um, you either have success or failure. You are replacing each time you pull a card, you're replacing it. So it's not changing the probability of getting a jack. So this is a geometric distribution. The other one that we can look at as an example is suppose you flip a coin until you get a head. Is this a geometric? The answer is yes. It's either success or failure. And you're just going to keep flipping that head and the coin until you get the head. Now, the formula for the probability for a geometric distribution is P for probability of X, the X being the number of independent trials until the first success, which is equal to some number K. So it could be the third or fourth or fifth or 200th will be equal to 1 minus a probability of success raised to the k minus 1. So if you're looking what's the probability of getting success after the third attempt, this k would be a 3. So it'd be 3 minus 1 and then times p. So in other words, the 1 minus p we know is q. So it's q, the probability of failure, raised to the k minus 1 multiplied by p. So the other formulas that we will use for this section is um, equality, so the probability of getting exactly k or less. It's going to be 1 minus the probability of getting 1 minus the uh, failure raised to the k. Um, if you are looking for x to be greater than or equal to some number k, then it's 1 minus the failure, k raised, uh, 1 minus the failure, which is 1 minus p, which is q, raised to the uh, k minus 1. And then it's strictly greater than, and if it's strictly greater than, then it's 1 minus the probability of it equal to or less. So it's 1 minus p to the k, which is a probability of x is greater than k. So those are useful. Let's take a look at this first example. Suppose Maria owns a light bulb manufacturing company and determines that 6 out of 75 bulb bulbs, light bulbs, are defective. What is the probability that Maria will find the first faulty light bulb on the 10th one that she tested? So let's write uh, symbolically what we're looking at. So P of capital X is equal to 10. So that's what we're looking at in terms of the notation. And since this is equality, we know this is going to be equal to, well, in general, P of X is equal to K is going to be the probability of failure, which is Q, and then the K minus 1 multiplied by P. So this is going to be Q. Well, okay, so what is what does it mean to be success, or what is the percentage of it possibly being successful? 
So um, P is, uh, we're looking for success being the first time we find a defective. So we know that there are six out of 75, six out of every 75 are defective, so that is success. So then I'm gonna have uh, six divided by 75 raised to the 10, and then I'm gonna multiply that by six. Um, let me back up. Q, that's P. Q is gonna be one minus six over 75 which if I common denominator subtract six, so I'm gonna get 69 out of 75 is Q. So let's back it up. We have 69 out of 75 is a failure, failure to get a defective light bulb. So this is gonna be raised to the 10, and then this is gonna be raised and multiplied by six over 75. And so the probability of going out to 10 bulbs before I find my first effective one is 0 0.0378. So that's my probability. And what is the probability that Maria will find the first light bulb after the 10th one she had done? So we let's do the symbolic. P of X is greater than 10. Let's go up and look at my formulas again. I have, this. what I'm looking for is X less than K, which ends up just being, this is just gonna be equal to one minus the probability of success raised to the K. So this is gonna be one minus the six out of 75, the probability of success, which is getting the failed one raised to the 10th. And when I totally get done, put this in my calculator, I'm gonna get 0 0.4344. So the probability that Maria will find the first faulty light bulb after the 10th one, that she tested would be a 0.4344. So she actually has a higher probability of finding the first one after the 10th one than getting it exactly at the 10th one. So our variance and skewedness is um, gonna be things that we can calculate. So our variance, so we'll just start with the mean or expected value, mu is one over P. Okay, so mu, because this is, um, expected, that's why it's mu not x bar. So it's one over the probability of quote success. The variance is going to be, uh, which is sigma squared, one minus p divided by p squared. p of course is the probability of success. Standard deviation is the square root of this. The skewedness, we can actually calculate the skewedness, which is one plus p divided by the square root of p. And uh, if the calculated skewness is between negative 0.5 and 0.5, then the data are nearly symmetrical. Something to note, if the calculated skewness is larger than 0.5, then the data is either positively or right, or positively or what we call right skewed. Now, suppose Maria owns that manufacturing company and six out of 10, blah, blah, blah. Find and interpret the mean. Okay, so what does the mean? Well, let's find out what mu is. Mu is equal to one over six divided by 75, which is 75 divided by six, which if I were to put this in my calculator, this is gonna tell me that I have 12.5. What does this actually mean in terms of the my um, application? Well, it means that Maria should expect to test more than 12 bulbs before she actually finds a defective one because 12.5 means that after the 12th one, so about the 13th one is when she should expect to find the very first defective bulb. Find the standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation is fairly straightforward. Standard deviation is just going to be um, the square root. So sigma is equal to the square root of one minus six over 75 divided by six over 75, that quantity squared. And this is gonna give me 11.98 when I put this in my calculator. If I wanted the variance, I'm just going to square that number and whatever that is, is my variance. So then I'm gonna look at my skewedness. And so the way I'm gonna do my skewedness is this funky looking gamma one, that's what that is, is gamma one is gonna be equal to one plus six over 75 divided by the square root of six over 75. I'm gonna put that in my calculator. I could actually put that in my spreadsheet if I was inclined. 
I'm gonna get 3.82. So that tells me that it is not very symmetrical and it's actually kind of skewed to the right. And as you all know, I love my spreadsheets. So I would recommend something that looks like this for your geometric. Um, geometric distribution, note you must choose one less if it is less than or more and more. So make sure you put that in there somewhere or not. We're gonna use this if we are chasing the kth term for success. Use only if you have two outcomes, success or failure. P is probability, K is the number of trials before success. Mu is the average, which is one over P. Sigma is the square root of mu and then mu minus one. Um, actually, sigma should be not mu minus one, should be, let me change this. We know that for our sigma is the square root, S-Q-R-T, and then it should be uh, Q divided by the um, P squared. So that's what um, that is equal to. And then that means the variance is not that, let me cancel that out. The variance should be just Q divided by P squared. Now we know that Q, and I actually should have put over here, um, this is one minus P, so I should have put that in there with an equals, and I put apostrophe there, so Excel knows not to consider that a formula. My mu, I would have done the mu, and I should have actually put what I did here, so I do apostrophe again if I wanna write what I'm putting here. And I'm going to type in the words, uh, so mu, excuse me, mu is just 1 divided by p. So that's how I would have done that. I would have just grabbed the cell that had the p in it here, had an equal symbol. So what actually is in this cell buried is an equals and then 1 divided by the cell that has the p. Sigma, again, what I should have put here on the side is how I got there, and that's the sqrt. And then I would have done, grab the cell that has my q in it divided by the cell that has my P in it, the quantity squared. And that's what's actually in this cell that you can't see. And then of course my variance, which is basically what I just did, but without the square root. So I would have the Q divided by the P squared. So in my cell back here, I have an equal sign and I'm grabbing the Q and then I'm doing the division bar. I'm grabbing the cell that has the P and I'm squaring it. Similarly, that when I'm down here doing my P is X is equal to, X is greater than K, X is less than K. At the back end, I am grabbing the cells that have Q, K, and P in them. And I'm using the formulas that were given to you earlier in the video. Um, and then just the triple dots that say, hey, be really careful that if you're using the ge geometric distribution, you must choose one less if it is less than or if it is greater than, unless it states inclusive in the question in this chapter. So that's just a reminder to make sure that I am paying attention to the K and using one less. And pretty much that's it for chapter four. So now you have all the spreadsheets that you would need to be successful in chapter four to do the homework and the test. That's it for this video, nice short one, and we will see you in class.